Fishing over the winter. Oh, okay. Got it. It is 7.02. We'll call the meeting to order. Um, first and foremost, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? All right, seeing none. We'll move on to privilege of the floor. If anyone would like to speak um, on anything that is, we don't have any. Oh. Yes, outside of public hearing. So if it's specifically to the 18 East Miller and you want to speak at the public hearing, otherwise we're open for privilege of the floor. It's, it's, yeah, no, fine. Um, this actually does, it's a question to the board. I um, was here previously. Mm -hmm. And Greg and I have been talking and trying to figure out because there's zoning in place that doesn't allow uh, business unless it's on a corner. And um, the two kind of thoughts is either putting like a very short road in that leads to a commercial driveway uh, or rezoning the entire property. Can and you just remind them like which property you're talking about? Sorry, uh, 1914 Danby Road just past the corner. Of Michigan Hollywood. Um, I don't know if either of those are preferred or a problem, but that is kind of the next step I'm going towards before coming back in. Um, do we so have the map? So, just a, yeah, just a, a, a refresher. <laughs> like what it would be zoned to. Um, oh, well, I don't have a, I have to pull to the zoning map, but. Um, so Zach had come to the planning board um, a few months ago. And what I'll do, I'll just zoom in just in an aerial. Um, so we're all right here. And Zach's property is just south on 96B. Up in this lot, he has built this house right here. It's zoned Hamlet neighborhood, and it's right on the edge of the Hamlet neighborhood. And so uh, restaurant use, um, and a few other uses are only allowed on a corner lot. So that was kind of a big hang up when he came to the board a few months ago during the sketch plan review was he would have to build a road and, and he's been exploring that and talking with DOT about pulling a road in. Um, but there are some other paths that he could also take and, and one of them is to request a, a rezoning um, or having the town do an, a, a major sort of zoning amendment, um, which has been talked about in some town board meetings for allowing these uses, restaurant, um, a few other uses, I think religious institution, to allow them just on say 96B or 34, 96 down in West Danby, right. um, rather than on the corner. So there's really kind of three paths forward. And I think just to paraphrase, you, you just want to yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to get the zoning change. That seems almost like favoritism at this point because I'm the one person trying to do something. I know it would be beneficial to other people in the future. But the other two ways, I'm going to hear back on um, like the concerns of the tax structure change because it would then be potentially be paying higher taxes on the house to commercial standards too. But it's a previously commercially zoned. So. Right, so um, Leslie actually pointed this out. So this property used to be part of a planned development zone, um, and then it got rezoned to a commercial, commercially zoned property. And there's not many commercially zoned properties in Danby, like purely commercial. Um, and then with the new zoning in 2021, it just got, the slate was wiped clean and became part of the Hamlet neighborhood. So. Um, Leslie brought that to my attention, I think, after a planning board meeting a couple months ago, or even last month. And, you know, I, I actually think it, it could be a decent candidate for a rezoning. Um, if if the town doesn't want to amend the entire Hamlet neighborhood zoning to allow these uses. Uh, in oh, another, in a, right, in other places other than just the, mm -hmm. in, in just the uh, corners. Or requiring Zach to build a road. Um, I'm kind of looking at 
the corner lots, there aren't that many that are yeah. unoccupied, right? So if we wanted to imagine a hamlet that had restaurants and other related uses like churches, <laughs> um, there wouldn't be, there's only like three maybe lots that I could count that were unoccupied by houses that could even be used. Yeah. So it seems to me like that's at least I mean, I was in favor of the direction of rezoning that corridor to like probably to the extent of the Hamlet neighborhood. Like I think beyond that, it does become more spaced out and more residential. Like once mm -hmm. you start mm -hmm. getting further out, the houses are larger properties and further apart. Um, I would also support just rezoning that property if it um and then maybe if we end up coming to a point where it you know, if it takes a if it's a longer process and it takes more feedback from both the town board and our board to get to the point of rezoning the corridor, if that's the direction we want to go, then I would be in favor of rezoning that lot. I think it would be more problematic building the road. Like mm -hmm. it's more it's expensive. Well, it's not it's only that, but like, small. what's the to point? Where? Like, it goes <laughs> right. to nowhere. Yeah, it's gonna drive down. not going to help the community at, in any way, shape, or form. Like, it's not benefiting the community. Yeah. It's just tearing up more land. Yeah. You would build the bring, road and name it the road yeah. to nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, it would, you know, then there'd be the debate if it's a private road or if Bambi's maintaining it. And it's yeah. like, it's a whole ripple effect. Right. right. I, I'm also in favor of the zoning, because I think if we're thinking out further and further to what we'd like to see happen to Danby and the Danby, the properties and the stuff around here and have some more things, you're so close to the hamlet and it's it makes sense to allow something, like I think, to go that direction. And it's going to be a slow <laughs> process of getting properties available that if we open up a little bit more area, it'd be more likely that properties would become available that people would then be able to insert these kind of amenities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some more things along yeah. where we would like to see things develop. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I think it makes sense to just do that. Well, and just, and I see Joel has his hand up, but I just wanna say yeah. that um, in talking about this with Zach, um, I realized that there's either rezoning just his property mm -hmm. Or, you know, um, versus going through a process of rezoning the Hamlet neighborhood, one is really prop like private property owner driven, which is, you know, typical of, of development applications like we're seeing tonight. Um, the other one is really town driven, unless there's, you know, there, there's not a, unless I think it's just Zach, and I'm sure he could probably drum up a couple other support in the Hamlet neighborhood, you know, property owners. But what, what I'm getting at is one is, a you know so which can have some you know potential political ramifications or you know just it, it takes a little bit of a more of a lift on the town's end to uh, to you know rezone a, a, a an area versus a private property owner saying hey I'm approaching you and I want to apply for rezoning and there is a process to do that right. there's an application there's a fee there's just like yeah. there's a hearing like this um, so I think there's 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 pros and cons to each. It's just, a, it's just a I think it would be interesting because I it's been I don't know how many years since we were looking at the rezoning mm -hmm. of in general across the whole town to see how many existing properties have some form of commuter, commercial use. I mean, I know there's only like three or four that have required the corner property. But like how many are commercial use along that corridor already that are outside of the hamlet and are in the hamlet neighborhood mm -hmm. as like mm -hmm. like how like if they got bought up by somebody else and then they want to be a restaurant then suddenly unless you're saying oh well there was already an, a kind of an exception of commercial use on that property like they're also going to be in conflict even though it's already a commercial pro property mm -hmm. and is that could take it on to rezone his parcel right. and we could still do the larger rezoning eventually right if we want mm -hmm. or yeah. the town could yeah yes yeah. absolutely yeah right. yeah is that do you know is the the guy the gentleman who is partially preparing 
um, his food that he does at farmers market. Do you remember that you were who else was on the board when that happened? Well, yeah, that was over on Land Land Landon Road. Or yeah, now yeah. but he's just doing like food prep, right? There and then takes it down to farmers market. That's right. Um, yeah. But I think that that's still, they're still down there. I'm assuming they're still doing that because he didn't have another place. Sure. He was originally at a place downtown um, that expanded. And he wanted, <clears throat> so did we we make that into a PDZ so he could do I, that? I'd or? have to look back through how we did it. Yeah. But we, we did approve yeah. it. Yeah. Because he had a commercial kitchen and everything there. Yeah, Joel, did you want to comment? Um, the uh, on the on the question of the you know, enabling you know, businesses along, not just on the corners in, in the Hamlet neighborhood zone, you know the the town board talked about this, uh, whether to enable it all over the place, and there was pretty much a consensus that it would be that we would be we would support um, rezoning, uh, well changing the zoning so that it would be enabled along the major corridors. 96B and, and 3496 over here in West Danby. Um, and in fact, um, Greg was told, go ahead and work it up. So, you know, we're the, the board is poised when, when Greg brings it <laughs> back to the board to make that change. <laughs> um, and I'm a little surprised I didn't mention that, but um, uh, we're, we're, on, we're on board with it. Yeah, well, I, I think in that time, um, in, in that time, what happened was that Leslie came up to me. It was either the last planning board meeting or the one before, and said, "Hey, Zach's property used to be commercial." Well, so this is true. Kind of just brought this other question of, well, what if Zach just applies for a rezoning? And I think there's very, it's it really doesn't look like spot zoning. I mean, if somebody, let's just say, way down 96B said, "I want to, you know, rezone to commercial," that might be. You have to look at the comprehensive plan and you know see if it was actually supported in that. Um, I think there's very good uh, evidence and support for Zach to approach the town to do a just a single one-off rezoning of his property. Um, the question is just now, you know, I, I think or it's just a matter of, you know, does Zach want to do that um, or wait for uh, the slow wheels of government to turn and that we, you know, have, I mean, because I, I think amending the whole uh, zoning district here and in the hamlet should take some public hearing or two and get you know we talked about maybe doing a mailer to own, you know neighbor uh, property owners in the hamlets just getting some consensus maybe doing research on why why was why were these uses restricted to corner lots and so i haven't done that research and maybe i reach out to the former planner and see was there some reason behind that was because i would hate to you know, I, I think there's a little bit of, you know, me coming in here for not even a year and uh, just starting to change things around that um, have been established and there's a lot of community buy-in in the beginning. So, um, well, I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of community buy-in on that, on that. It wasn't, it was not a lot of discussion about that. Um, it's something David put in, um, embodying sort of uh, urban planning principles um, and don't think there's a lot of local commitment to to restricting the businesses to the corner lots, and there was agreement that we would be willing to rezone to enable it, enable businesses in the Hamlet neighborhood zones where all along the uh, the you know the major corridors. It's not that big of a and it's a zoning change either way. Um, the same requirements for public hearing, um, not that much different in terms of text change. Um, I don't. I don't really see where where there's a whole lot faster process for rezoning a single property, uh, and it, and it's true. I mean, it was it was a it went through a couple of in, in iterations as a as a commercial property, and was zoned that way back in the day when we had the only businesses that were accommodated were by in plan development zones practically, other than the little black boxes on the map where businesses had been at one point. Uh, so anyway, I I I um I think I think we have a board a board uh, I mean he hesitated to call it a mandate, but I think it's pretty close to to go ahead and and entertain the the rezoning of the Hamlet neighborhood zone along the along the major highways to accommodate 
businesses, not just on the corners. Well, it sounds like we're in favor and Zach just needs to decide if he wants to wait for that to happen or proceed with trying to do just that property. I guess some of what I have is if I go through saying it to commercial zoning, everything works out. Um, years down the road, can I change it back? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's possible. Okay. Um, <laughs> it be. But it's just not guaranteed. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I I just think that the, the main thing here is just either a private property approach to the town and says, I want to rezone my property, and that's just their their process, and we deal with the surrounding neighbors and just adjacent impacts versus changing the use of many people's properties could just generate discussion and, and conversation and um, you know, just uh, more people coming out, and you know, just might be there might be you might have to handle it a little bit just differently. So, um, yeah, probably the best thing is to just have him approach as an individual, and you can always do the you know, take the time to do the to do the uh, broader consideration. The two don't conflict in any way, they don't, no, and so just yeah. Mm -hmm. At least we hear some support for making it easier for businesses to operate the message. All right. Any other privilege on the floor conversation? Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes from April. I make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second it. Okay. Yes. David. Yes. 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 All right. Leslie is not here. Joel, are you giving us the town board liaison report? Uh, I, I could have if I didn't had any idea that I was going to do it, but I'm I'm hard pressed to just do it off the top of my head. Yeah, I don't know if Catherine. Is. Greg could probably do as well. No, not on the town board. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll assume everything is happy and going well with the town board. <laughs> All right. Development reviews. First up, 18 East Miller Road. Um, remind me where we left with this. Did we determine lead agency? We did, right? Right. So, yep. yeah. So, last time the only action that was taken was um, just determining lead agency. So, the only changes to the plat, and I can pull them up here on my screen. Um, since last time, we're that it now shows the, the new well. yeah the, the new wells. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's the existing well. The new well. well, there's a proposed well. Proposed well, well okay. and and the proposed driveway, which if you haven't seen it, they're they're uh, all going in right now. And I was up there yesterday um, talking to Joel about planting new trees out there, um, which is required just for the building permit aspect. So. Um, the yes, yeah, so the lot lines haven't changed since the last review, or maybe they maybe they jogged a little bit, but uh, they're each still one acre. Uh, mm -hmm. The same health department approval still applies. Mm -hmm. So, what the the, the re requests of the planning board tonight are to determine environmental significance. We I did draft the resolution for that. You don't necessarily need to read. Um, if someone makes a motion to. Okay. okay. Not to read all the whereases, but to be what, what you're resolving. Right? Okay. Um, and then open the public hearing and then taking out on the uh, five. And then any questions. Are there any new questions? Any well, no. Okay. Do wells just like your S do wells get reviewed by anybody? 
Not us. No. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. I was just thinking it was. I don't know. Is that the health department that reviews a, a, a well location? That will have to be approved by the engineer if we have. Oh, the septic and the well. Okay. All right. So, um, seeing no questions on the revised plat, which also meant we have to place and resign. Um, determining environmental significance. Do we have? To do any checklists? Oh, yep, yep, so I got that up here. Um, so I stop sharing. Um, I mean, what I put down. So the only other question on the short environmental assessment form last time was if you recall, there was. Um, one of the check boxes was coming up of oh, there's, oh, that's there's a water body. I ended up yeah. the DEC. It was really my error because it, it captures water bodies on adjacent properties as well. And there's a <laughs> nine acre property uh, just to the west of, uh, of Joel that in the very north corner, there's a little water body up there. The subdivision won't, won't look like that. Okay. So you just have to say, yes, there is a water body um, and no, there's no impacts to it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, if you want, I'll just read down three real quick, and then unless anyone has considers it large or moderate, we'll assume we're saying on the no. Yep. So, will a proposed action create a material conflict with the adopt with an adopted land use plan or zoning regulation? No. Will a proposed action result in a change in the use or intensity of the land? No or small. Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? No or small. Will the proposed action have an impact on the environmental characteristics that cause the establishment of a CEA, which we don't have any? So no. Will the proposed action result in adverse change in the existing level of traffic or affect existing traffic for mass transit, biking, or walkway? No. Will the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy that fails to incorporate reasonably available energy conservation or renewable energy opportunities? No or small. Will the proposed action impact existing public or private water supplies? Um, no or that was small. Public or private waste, waste, waste water treatment utilities? No or small. Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of important historic, archaeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? No. Will the proposed action result in an adverse change to natural resources? Small will the proposed action result in an increase in potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage problems? No, we're small. And will the proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? No, or small. Um, so if we want to take an action. The drafted resolution is that the Town of DMV Planning Board, based on careful consideration of the application materials determines the proposed minor subdivision will result in no significant impact on the environment and that a declar negative declaration for the purposes of Article 8 of the Environmental Conservation Law be filed in accordance with the provisions of Part 617 of the State Environmental Quality Review Act. So if anyone would like to make a motion of that determination. Want to make a motion? Oh, all right. Yes. 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 Okay. Now I will open the public hearing on the final plat. If anyone has any comments for record, raise your hand. Anybody in the room? Okay, seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Um, that was pretty controversial. It was. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Do you, okay, so um, is there anything on this list of resolutions of whereas is that I should bring to mention? Um, yeah, you just do the resolve the again. Two properties that will each be more than just over an acre. 
um, doesn't have a minimum lot size. It was already approved by the county whole health department for wastewater requirements um, and that they issue confirmation that it will it meets the requirements for the new lot. Um, I think the rest of this is more or less just our laws. Um, extension of the road, environmental, we did the environmental review. Um, everything was published to the neighbors. We just held the public hearing. We declared late agency and filed negative declaration. Therefore, let it be resolved that the Town of DMV Planning Board does hereby grant final subdivision approval to the proposed minor subdivision of the Town of DMV tax parcel number 7.1-19.3 by Joe Lampson owner subject to filing with count Tompkins County Clerk within 62 days. Do we have any other? I don't think, did we, I think we talked about um, planting against the other property last time. I don't know if we want to add that as any formal contingency. That's all I'm recalling from our previous review of the property. I think the rest of it had to do with where the well and the property lie in the driveway were. Did you say that was already happening, Greg? Yeah, so with the building permit, um, uh -huh. Joel is adding in six six new trees um, in the front yard. Um, and then he's actually clearing out some some dead ash, which is which is good because there's ash they're dead and they're probably a safety hazard. Mm -hmm. So um, no, he's not required to do any other landscaping beyond that, just the front yard trees. Um, and he's replacing trees too. He took down a larger tree, uh, a larger pine tree, and is replacing it with the two smaller trees. So six in total. But no, that's not, um, you know, it, it's usually for a small subdivision like this. There's probably not reasons are really condition it, but that's, that's the board's decision. Um, he's, you can drive, drive by tonight and see that, that the house is being built right now. Um, the new driveways are in. Um, and yeah, so a, a lot of a lot of sort of review is going into the uh, building permit and zoning portion of it, mm -hmm. uh, and stormwater management. So there's so there's a portion of the site that like drains off, and they, you know, made sure to have some silt fences there too. So okay, okay. Someone wants to make a motion on the resolution that is read. I'll make a motion. All right. I'll second. Okay. Thank you. Berman? Yes. David? Yes. Driver? Yes. Dimitri? Yes. And Monica? Yes. Motion passed. Good. You're all set. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll hand this to you now, and then uh, so you'll take this down to the county uh, clerk. And they'll record it and then subdivision will be in the You gotta do this in 62 days. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So they only need one. Yeah, we need one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. All right. Next on the agenda, the 405 Troy Road parcel. Um of the minor subdivision. Um, do we need to declare the agency 
and review the plat and discuss what, like, I don't know, can we discuss what's going on with the easement? Is there any decision? Yeah, so, all right, well, it looks like um, the applicant did not show up. You know, I sent him an email today and <laughs> said, please show up. So that's unfortunate. Um, it's only 4.30 then. I know, I did say EST in my, in my <laughs> communications, so it's very clear. Um, now, I know in with variance applications, applicants are required to be there. So it's, I, I think it's gonna be up to you all. If, I mean, you all could review it. I'm happy to answer as many questions as possible. Um, uh, I was getting some of you the, the background on this before. Um, would you like me to, to sort of- Is this the brother and review? sister? Yeah. I'm splitting it? Mm -hmm. Well, that was, was, that, was a couple, that was near there. And that was a couple months ago. Yeah, that was yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So, um, all right, well, well at least I'll, I'll just pull this up and then I can at least just talk about it. There's, there's no action that, that was requested tonight except for declaring lead agency. Okay. Um, you all can so always can just do that and then have a conversation right. with them next time. Right. Okay. Or, or you can just punt it all to, to just next time. It's, it's completely up to you because the applicant should be here to just answer questions. Um, it doesn't hold up anything if we do lead agency and the review no. in the same meeting next time, right? No. Um, so would it would it help if I pulled up a map of this property? Yeah, yeah. Let's just look at it and okay. talk about it a little bit. And if there's anything we want to send back to them. So So here we are. This is a almost 70 acre parcel. It's in the rural one zone district. This is the very Northern part of Danby. So this road over here is Troy Road coming up. And then down here on the South is Nelson Road. There's one house here. It's on the, it takes access from Troy Road. And this was their mother's house. So Adam and Carrie Cartman and their mother, um, Someone told me that I forgot her name, but she, uh, uh, she lived there for a while and, and so has bequeathed this property to, to her son and daughter. So they're, they they now want to figure out what to do with it. And um, and then so the, the very northern part is the town of Ithaca here that has mm -hmm. the Eldridge Preserve, nature's, Nature Preserve. Mm -hmm. So Adam approached me a few months ago or a couple months ago at this point and and sort of immediately talked about preserving this in honor of their mother um, and essentially br bringing more of the nature preserve south into Danby. Um, there are, it's hard to see from this map, but there are some streams that come off the hill down into the nature preserve. So, and then, uh, uh, so, so there's some nice kind of back areas, it looks like, even though there's those easements running through it. So, they're, uh, they, they they want to sell this property to someone and they thought, well, maybe just doing a subdivision, a smaller subdivision to make it a little bit more marketable. Let's parcel off a 10 acre property on Nelson Road. Um, and I think ideally they want just one person to buy it. And hmm. he had approached the Nature Conservancy about putting it in an easement, but they quoted him about $25,000 to do that. So he pulled back from doing it initially doing a conservation easement, um, which is why the short environmental assessment form says no conservation easement proposed. And I'm, I'm going over this background because there was a little bit of back and forth. Um, but then I talked to him in a follow up conversation and informed him of Danby's conservation easement program, which doesn't charge twenty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and um, so. Him and his sister are back on the being interested in a conservation easement while also retaining some development rights. So what Adam wanted me to communicate um, in his last email to me was, so there's this proposed 
smaller 10 acre lot down here that would have one home. And then there's an existing home here, but he wants to be able to retain to have at least one more home somewhere else on the Troy Road side. So whether that's done through subdivision, so into three lots, or it's done through clustering development rights, which is a very rare, it's a rare process, but it's where somebody with a large piece of land, and if there's a 10 acre density, they can <clears throat> cluster those developments into a, a smaller area on the lot. Um, and then reserve the rest of the lot. So it, it's kind of like what he's discussing here. I, I think um, a lot of this is really on his end to figure out what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. And I've, I, I was hesitant actually to bring this to the board, and I seeing that he's not even here. Maybe I should, but I, because th there's still some questions and things that he's trying to figure out just with his sister about what they want to do with this property. So, you know, maybe we can just kind of leave it at that and not take up, you know, unless there's questions with that, not take up too much of your time, but just that I, I think we will be seeing him again. Okay. Um, and he is going to be working with the CAC, the Conservation Advisory Council, on going through the process of an easement. Obviously, that's entirely up to him and his sister. He could just, you know, get halfway through the process and just, you know, say, no thanks anymore. Um, Joel did have a large, kind of long conversation with him, so if he raised his hand, if you want to call him. If you allow me to, if you allow me to uh, comment, I'll, I'll, I'll augment what, what Greg just said. I had, had a nice long conversation with him um, in which he was um, very supportive of, of, of doing a conservation easement on the entire property. Um, with, with with some, as, as Greg mentioned, reserved right um, yet to be worked out. Um, but we, um, we got the green light essentially to proceed. At the last CAC meeting, we created a a, a, a working group to 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 uh, negotiate with him. You know what would work best for this whole property. I described to him the various zones that are possible within our conservation easement, and he said already I can imagine. I already know where, what I would put in what zone. So, you know, he's, he was very um, pleased to see what he could do within the context of a town of Danby conservation easement. And um, I anticipate that that, um, so, so the next step is we'll, we'll do a, a site visit. He said, go ahead um, and just let me know ahead of time so I can, I can notify the tenants or she knows what's going on with people traipsing around on the property. Um, and um, and we we'll, and we go from there. That's usually the first step is to do a site visit, and then we'll make the same evaluation of you know where where we think it would make sense to have in what zone, um, see if we're on the same page, and uh, and take it from there. Okay. It sounds like there's not enough concrete information to really do anything today. So right. I say we punt it until yep. next month. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Too many. Unknowns at the moment. Many if, ands, and buts. Yeah. 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 Right. I will say, though, I felt it like a, a little bit of a win on my part because he initially was going to say, oh, no, I just want to subdivide it. And, and he said, I, I'm going to sell it to a to a green minded buyer who just will never subdivide it and develop it. And I said, oh, I've heard that. <laughs> 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 and I'm saying, but yeah. so if you really care about preserving a, a property um, and allowing some, you know, housing to happen, uh, you, you should you should go through a conservation easement. And how many uh, how many acres was it? It's almost it's sixty eight point eight. Yeah. And could he ever get annexed by the by the uh, on, by the zones? Expand there. The town of Ithaca? The, we the, wouldn't, uh, you could, you couldn't go over to, could they No, go we want to keep line. Them. Or? No, we want to keep them. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, not that it would still be in Danby, but it would be part of the. It would be part of the Danby East Mid Right. Yeah. Right. It would just be a, uh, I think maybe not formally, but um, just feel wise, it would still be a preserve. It would be a larger preserve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and he wants to name it after his mom, so it wouldn't be the Eldridge uh, Preserve; would be the it like Elma. But a preserve is different from a conservation. Oh, right, right. Yeah, that's true. But they'd still yeah. be physically 
Adjacent. Well, if it's yeah. preserved, then I mean, he could have a conservation easement and not allow trespass. Right. Right. Well, that's more than people, you know, just can you try? I didn't know. I thought, well, what the heck? They're right there, maybe. Yeah, but that's but they charge twenty five thousand dollars. No, that's that's mm -hmm. something that's mm -hmm. the nature conservancy, which is kind of fun. That one is. We'll give you this land, but okay, you're going to have to pay us twenty five thousand. Yeah, that's what. That's <laughs> this uh, are they the nature? Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, well, they are nature conservancy. Yeah, All those guys. Oh, okay. So, so I, yeah, I, I stand correct right now. All right. <laughs> Any other planner reports? I'll keep it just really brief, just, just for formality's sake. Uh, something exciting. So the we're, I'm actually leading the effort to plan a planning conference here in Ithaca. Um, it's a little bit outside of my role with Danby, but um, I'm the Southern Tier Section Director for the, for the American Planning Association. And so it's our turn to host the conference. So Ithaca, we're going to have it October 9th through 11th. Yeah. Um, I probably have money in my budget to send a few of you all there, or even just certain sessions during during the day, uh, food and all that, and uh, libations. Um, so I'll, I'll give you more more information as we go along. But that'd be a great training opportunity. Hint, hint. You all need four hours of training. I'll remind you all um, too. So I wanted to put that out there. Um, speaking of training, I'm communicating to you all about the training. The town is going through a a email shuffle right now and it's and it's uh, a little bit painful and there's a it's, there's a lot of people that haven't been able to access their email i've probably talked to four or five of you all in the bza and the planning board who haven't been able to access if you can't access your town email call the town clerk mariah dillon um, or call cindy just call the main line she has all your passwords because we're transitioning to microsoft outlook eventually we also might the town is considering uh, uh, changing the email policy so that not everyone has to have a town email. It can just be personal email. Um, and then maybe the chair would have the town email, but there's, yeah. there's, yeah, it, it is a lot to have, I think 54 emails is what the town mm -hmm. has, which you know, would be a lot. So the, the town is town board's figuring out if, 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 if they can or if they should, you know, change it to be that. Um, but if you can't access the email, the bottom line is call the town clerk and she'll okay. get you back in your email because that's where I'll send you all training opportunities. Um, there's lots of recorded videos. Those are easy. Spend an hour at night, just read the video or, or watch the video, shoot me an email say, and shoot send you an email saying, I watched the video. It's an honor system. You know, oh, it's, okay. it's important. We don't have to print out the little certificate and uh, give it to you. Is that a thing? I certificates don't... always? Is that a thing? When Whenever somebody has reported a planning to me, they have sent to me because I'm going to require it. I mean, well, well, I'll think about that. But I think if you just let us know that you, you did the training, um, well, I'll just keep some things. So um, at the May 6th town board meeting, um, they uh, approved the, the, the small zoning amendments that allow signs now in the Hamlet neighborhood. Um, so I think I said that I would send you all the language to that, and I will I will do that. But it was a pretty small learning amendment, just allowing the businesses to have some small signs in the Hamlet neighborhood. And the only other thing I'll just update you all is that the Danby Market is going to be Danby Food and Drink is going to be opening in a few weeks. There was an email blast today. He didn't give us an actual date. It'll be a soft opening um, with retail and, and hot food will come later. And everything, but just wanted to update all that since you proved that site plan plan recently, and I'll kind of keep it at that unless there's other there's lots of other things going on. But um. so in terms of that planning, it's two days. It's the ninth, tenth, and eleventh. It's right. three days. Three days. So is it something where Danby could like take X slots, and then we could all we could kind of figure out who can go which uh -huh. times and hours. That. Maybe usually when when you register, it's like by name, or maybe we could register as Danby Planning Board member. Um, we <laughs> might have, we'll see. I have to. It comes out of my my one of my budget lines, um, mm -hmm. and so we'd see how much I'd have at that point in the year to register. I think we have registration by September, so there's seven of you. Registrations are 
We're shooting for like two, something under 300 for the whole conference. Days will be broken out though into smaller amounts. So what I'm, but, but I can, we, we can think about that. Um, or I might just gather interest. Who's interested in, you know, are you interested in one of these days? And there'll be sessions, you can see which sessions. Um, mm -hmm. the, the theme is planning for protopia, designing with empathy. Oh. Very, very Ithacan, right? Yeah. Know. Right. So in contrast to dystopia or utopia, this is protopia. This is very optimistic that it's not the highest level, you know, to get there. It's just incremental change. It's incremental, you know, moving along, plotting along towards, towards a greater future um, and designing with empathy. Uh, I, I can send you all a blur. I have a little written blur. But, so I'll, I'll probably field interest, see who's interested, and then sort of whittle it down from there. If somebody wants a full conference, then we you know, have to we draw straws or how we'll do it. And it depends on how much I have my study. A lot of days, too. Yeah. 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 So. so just so so you don't or we don't feel bad about what happens at the planning board. I, I just this morning I did three and a half hours of training. Now I work three hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> They forgot to send out messages that we had to do them. So a whole bunch of them have, you know, have expired and stuff. But, oh, my gosh, unbelievable in terms of just you're talking about people coming up with this being with empathy or whatever, the different kind of things that I think have changed from our trainings from a year or two ago with language and what kind of stuff. Yeah, it's like. Unreal. <clears throat> and, and that wasn't for the planning. That was no, no, that's for my my hourly work for Racker. And they have, <clears throat> and because they run houses, a lot of it was also, you know, all of the procedures for <clears throat> blood and all of that kind of stuff. It was over three hours. <laughs> <clears throat> So doing um, four hours for for the planning board is really a treat. I <laughs> 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 point of view. <laughs> you can do it all in one sitting. Well, I yeah, but mine had all expired because they forgot to send out the emails to let us know that they were due. So Oops. I was I, I, out of compliance. Mm -hmm. I did them. <clears throat> all right. I think we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, yeah. <laughs> Greg, I have to conclude that that mic system that we had before was actually money in the sound. So I might have been. Oh, I thought yeah. I heard it. Did I not close it up? I could hear everybody tonight, and I never could with that. You're not Kevin. Yes. So, I'm glad I'm afraid.